Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 39. As always, thanks for subscribing, for watching, and for all the great feedback. It is appreciated. Uh, in today's Tip of the Day, I am going to show you how to make a camera track a character. Uh, and we've done some related stuff in the past, but uh, I wanted to show you this one. And I am going to have to give full credit here to another YouTube user, M U L L E. DK13, Mullah DK13. Go check out his channel. He's got some great videos. Uh, but the reason I have to credit him is because I learned this from him. I'm going to show you a slightly more simplified version of this than he does, but I'm also going to link you a more detailed tutorial that he did, which is an excellent one, and you should go watch it when you're done with this one because it will show you how to do this a little bit more flexibly. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to show you is how to make a camera pan and follow a character without making the camera actually move except to just control the rotation. And it's, uh, it's not something that's really simple to do, but once you understand, it's not difficult. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a camera, and I'm going to move it forward a little bit, and I'll just leave it here for the moment. I'm going to press F11, and I'm going to go into the game window. I'm going to run over here. And I'll hit F11 again. I'm going to record this scout running across the game window here. So I'll wait for the countdown. Beep, beep, beep. And then I'm going to run across. I'm going to hit Escape. Switch back to the camera that I created before. OK, so now the, the scout is running that way. So I want to have the scout run from left to right. So there he goes. Very nice. How nice. So what if I want to do something like this and have the camera follow the scout as he runs from left to right? Well, it is not as easy as you might think. I experimented with this for a little while and tried different things with locks and so forth. None of it really worked uh, until I stumbled across uh, Mullah DK13's uh, tutorial. Uh, so here's what you'll need to do. We're going to go ahead and create an animation set for existing elements, and I'm going to go ahead and create it for the camera and for the scout model. And uh, now, this is important. I am going to click the scout, and then I'm going to control click the camera. So I'm clicking the scout first, then I click the camera. All right, and then um, I have to go into, you, know, you have to have selected the scout first. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to go into the script editor. And uh, the script editor, if you don't have it available on your list of uh, windows, just go to Windows and select Script Editor, and it will appear. The script editor is where you can do some interesting things with Python commands. And uh, we have to manually create an aim constraint here. What I am doing by selecting these two objects is I am now setting up a, a, a means for me to create a constraint between them, which is a set of rules that define how two objects will interact with each other. And by doing this, I'm creating an aim constraint, which says the one object will point at the other object. So it is sfm dot aim constraint left parent m o equals true. Now this is case sensitive, so it's sfm all lowercase dot capital A I M capital C O N S T R A I N T left parentheses M O in lowercase equals true capital T R U E then a right parentheses then click submit it should say running script and then we should be done and now when I press play the camera follows the scout hooray so what did we just do? Again, what we've done is we've used a very simple Python command to create a constraint between the scout and the camera. And I had to select the scout first because the way the constraint works, I wanted the camera to follow the scout, not the scout to follow the camera. And that's important. And uh, what I did was I, uh, the command I executed was aim constraint. And I, there are other types, and we may explore those again at some point in the future. Uh, but for now, what I've done is I've just created a very simple aim constraint between the camera and the scout. Now, there's a couple of caveats to this. If my aim was uh, was off in, with the camera, and I now notice now that I can't actually move the camera, or can I actually? Yeah, see, I cannot move the camera now because there is an aim constraint and it's locked uh, to the scout. I'm going to go ahead and create a second camera, and we will I will show you what I mean. I'll create an animation set for an existing element. I'm going to say camera two, 
And uh, this time I'm going to move camera two so that the scout is in the right hand side. I'm going to control click the scout and I'm going to control click camera two. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this script again. And now when I press play, the camera still follows the scout, but note that there's something different here. The camera's orientation is relative to the position it was in when you created the constraint. It doesn't zero in on it. So the view of the camera, if I switch back to camera one, he's not in the center of this one either. Note that he's slightly off-centered. And so when we get to the end of the sequence, he's still slightly off-center. It is more pronounced when I look at it in camera two, but that's only because I deliberately created the scene with the, cam with the scout far to the right side. And this is important to understand. So when you create these constraints using that aim constraint, you can make a camera follow something. But if you want to have it in a specific location, like say the very center of the camera, go look at Mullah DK13's tutorial because what he does is he will take you through the steps of creating an object, centering it in the view, locking the camera to it, and then binding that object to another model. And there's a couple of additional steps you'll want to take. But I don't want to steal his thunder. He has a great tutorial on the more specific details of it. What I've done is I've just shown you a quick and dirty way uh, to lock a camera to a model so that that model will be followed by the camera. But it's, it's, uh, it's limited in the fact that excuse me, that the constraint is going to be relative to where the camera was pointing when the uh, constraint was created. So there you go. That's your tip of the day number 39. And again, I want to give full credit and kudos to Mullah DK13 uh, for the great uh, uh, information that he provided that allowed me to put together this tip for you. So go check out his channel uh, and watch his other great tutorials and videos because he's got a whole host of them. Uh, all right, well, with that, I am your friend, Jimmer Linz. This has been your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day, number 39. Uh, I really appreciate you watching. Have a great day, and enjoy using Source Filmmaker.